Hi, this presentation will be about fostering a culture of self advocacy in your school. My name is Sarah Johnstone and I teach at the Calgary Girls Charter School. I will acknowledge that we are situated on Treaty 7 territory. These are the ancestral lands of the Kainai, Pekani, Sika, Sutana, and Stony Nakoda nations. Goals for this presentation are to offer insights on research that outlines the benefits of self-advocacy for all students, but specifically for those with LDs and targeting how to support um, developing that as a skill for those uh, people and share collaborative space where those who are beginning this work along with me um, can communicate and can leave resources and share. So most of this vocabulary we all speak to in our daily lives as teachers. However, disabilities essentially are something that keeps a student or keeps a person from being able to engage in an activity thoroughly. A learning disability is specific to learning. Advocacy, we want to acknowledge is, um, and self-advocacy specifically, is a way of trying to take care of oneself and using voice. There are many components of that. Adaptations, modifications, and IPPs. So in Alberta, we use the term IPP and generally adaptations and or accommodations or strategies are built within that. So that's what we want students to understand better. And that's what we want to help them do. Modifications or modified programs are not what we're talking about. So that would be as an example, a k &E program where it is a completely different curriculum. We're talking about modifications um, in, in a different way. I think absolutely this can apply to that. But for the most part, we're talking about students with mild, moderate and severe IPPs in your schools. OK, so teaching adolescent students with learning disabilities to self advocate. So uh, much of this research is based on the Prater et al article um, from 2014. The article is a shift in framework from having students be expected to advocate to teaching them. OK, so students with learning disabilities often need accommodations or some sort of strategies to support them in their programming. However, it is benefit to teach them how to ask for those and possibly even they don't even know why. So oftentimes students um, feel that teachers take over. This is based in the article, but also probably based in, in experience where the adults take over and say, you need this, and the student doesn't even know why. Um, and it's based on their psychoeducational report and the needs or the recommendations by the person who is, is making that report. Oftentimes, students don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are. They can say, I'm good at reading and I'm maybe not so good at math, but perhaps vocalizing that or understanding why that is and the gifts that they do have is where we start. So this study um, takes us back to not only why students need to advocate for themselves, but teaching them how to do it. So they, they took eight students and taught them self-advocacy skills and practiced this with a teacher. This was from the lens of a resource teacher, maybe a learning strategist, whoever you have in your building. And they started with lesson one through four, which was teaching self-advocacy. What is it? What are accommodations even? Maybe some that you've been receiving in the past. This teacher's you know, telling this student and they're like, ah, that's what I've been doing, right? What am I good at? What do I need? Um, how to ask for accommodation. So literally a script of how do I say this to another teacher or how do I ask this um, to make sure that I'm getting it and self-reflection on the process. How did it go? Did I get what I needed? Did it work this time? Did it not? So a big part of the process is um, the tangible things like surveys and checklists and procedures and a structure to gain more knowledge. Um, but one of the things that we want to look at is this particular skills inventory survey looks very simplistic, perhaps maybe too much um, uh, kid language, like I can spell most words correctly. However, I think when you actually apply it, you'll notice that this is the language that students need for understanding where they're at. So yeah, I can spell most words correctly, but can I use a table of contents and an index in a book? Maybe not so much yet. 
Okay, so many of these things that were the foundational level, so um, number one and two in that list were very basic, but what you would find is that actually students then have a better understanding of where they're at and then how to ask for what they need uh, starting in section three. So teaching students uh, with learning disabilities to self-advocate, what, what the key findings were or what your takeaway is, is that the research shows that modeling by teachers and parents is not enough. These students and, and all students actually, just seeing it from another person, that's not going to, that's not going to cut it. So students must be taught to advocate, videos, checklists, checklists, including them in their IPP, role playing, following up and feedback. Did this actually work? Why or why not? Thinking it through on the metacognitive side for the student, but also from the teacher perspective, allowing them some feedback on when you asked me, um, you were asking when I was in the middle of teaching and that wasn't an appropriate time and so on. Student with Students with exceptionalities must be taught how to ask for it. Um, that's why the script is in place. And videos teaching students how to ask are just as effective as in-person sessions. So this is a great takeaway. This is where I'm starting work um, at the Calgary Girls Charter School is building videos along with students, how to teach students to ask for what they need. Okay, so the authors of this study insist that teachers and administrators must be in this work together. Uh, schools with support and resource roles, if you have um, someone in, in that role at your school, uh, they need to begin by offering teacher training. That support is key and that's where we're working right now. Solicit the support of the general education teachers. Again, as all of us know, if everyone isn't on board, it's gonna flop, right? So supporting um, the resource roles and supporting all teachers in this work is going to be the role of the administration and it's essential. Providing incentives to students and teachers alike to actually do this work and again reflecting on who am I as a learner first and then how does that play out in my daily um, interaction in the classroom and how do I need accommodations? These are the questions that students should be asking themselves. Also, we must evaluate, is this actually working for our school? Is this working for individual students? How must it be um, adjusted? Okay, so advocacy is right. I'm just gonna leave this here. The United Nations Article 12, Conventions of the Right of the Child, they must be able to advocate for themselves, but oftentimes they haven't been taught. And, Last but not least, assume competence. So there's many different areas where students will have um, disabilities, language, literacy, maybe self-regulation, behavioral. Some of this is results of trauma and some of it is cognitive. So recognizing that we need to be teaching to all students, maybe a universal design for learning, but as well specifically targeting and supporting and giving the vocabulary needed to those students who need it the most. So developing a common practice of advocacy is expected and needed in schools, but so too is making sure that those students with exceptionalities have the language to ask for what they need and that must, that must be taught. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up by inviting you to a conversation. Um, resources on self-advocacy for LD students have been put together on a Jamboard that I've created and has been linked below. Um, if you would like to get in touch, send me an email. I'm easy to find at the school and you can always um, contact the school and they can put you in touch with me. I also welcome a conversation, whether it's on Jamboard or through email to share resources collaborate. I'm just starting this work myself and I look forward to talking to you more about it.